In this video, we're going to deploy a basic Express app to Heroku. Heroku makes deploying really easy, and there are only two prerequisites for this video. First, you need to go to heroku.com and sign up for a Heroku account. And trust me, it'll be free. And second, you need to download and install the Heroku command line interface. There are instructions for whatever operating system you want here on this page, and this page is linked by the Rhythm School curriculum. I'm going to go to the terminal and start bootstrapping a really simple Express app that we can deploy. So first I'm going to touch app.js, then I'm going to npm init, respond yes to all the defaults. Then I'm going to npm install express and morgan. Don't really need that many dependencies. Then I'm going to put the node modules into a git ignore file. Oops. That way we can initialize a git repository, add everything, and we don't get the massive node modules. We just have these four basic files. So I'm going to do an initial commit here. And I'll open up the app.js in my editor. Now I'm just going to copy and paste um, the packages basically here because it really doesn't matter what's going on in here. All that we need is basically a server to run. And you've seen all this before in the other um, episodes, basically. So I'm going to get rid of method override, body parser. Don't need any of that. And I think this should be fine. One thing I will mention is that we're defining port to be picked up as an environment variable. That's what this process.env.port is representing. And the reason is that Heroku likes to assign its own port via the port environment variable rather than running on 3000 all the time. So um, just, to, just add this line to your apps so that you can have a flexible port. And then on line 36, where the app.listen is called, you have to pass in the port variable and you can interpolate it if you want to, like that. This should be pretty much fine. I'm going to git add again and commit um, finished app.js. Let me just run it with nodemon to make sure it's actually going to work. And we don't even have to visit it. I trust that it's working. There were no errors. And what we can do is Roku login. And this is going to basically prompt you for your credentials. So I could just do Michael at rhythmschool.com. And then I'm not going to say my password out loud, but even if I could, it would take me forever because it's stored with LastPass. So it's about 50 characters long. So let me just copy that. I'm logged into Heroku. Now I'm going to create the application. So Heroku create um, demo. Eh, let's do dashes. Demo express app. And looks like we got demo express app .heroku app com, which is pretty cool. And Heroku has its own Git for tracking its version control, basically. Um, but the cool thing is you don't have to worry about that. It's going to handle it for you, so you don't really have to pay attention to much else. Um, the next thing we need to establish is a proc file or a process file that Heroku will use to read um, basically the instructions on how to start the app. Ours is going to be really simple. We're just going to do 
echo web node app.js into proc file. So if we cat proc file now, it just says for running this web app, you uh, execute node app.js. Then we can uh, make sure to git add that and commit added proc file. Um, and now the deploy actually just happens with git push Heroku master. And it says the build succeeded. It does a bunch of um, setting up in its deployment here. So there's a bunch of caching going on, um, setting environment variables, and that kind of thing. And it just verified the deployment. And it released it at demo express app .heroku -app .com. So we should be able to just type Heroku open. and the other screen that opened a window. Roku takes a little bit the first time you're loading it if you're on a free account. And that's just because they save money by putting their servers to sleep basically and only assigning resources to either people who pay for it or servers that are getting a lot of traffic but they prefer, obviously, people who pay for it. So we'll just give it a couple of minutes. If there's anything interesting I can talk about, you can actually specify the node version that you want. It, it defaulted to the long-term support version, same with NPM. But it, in your package.json, you can specify engines for each of them. Um, and you can see here it's unspecified, so it just went with the default. Let's see if it's loading. It's not working. Wait for it. I can actually, in my Heroku dashboard, check the logs for the app. I'm going to just go to more and view locks. And server is listening on port 3000. State change from started starting to crashed. Interesting. Uh, failed to bind to port. So let's see about this. Did it not take the correct port? Variable. I wonder if port has to be all caps. Try this one again. Get status, get add dot, get commit m, fix port variable, be all caps, and then get push Heroku master. So I'm checking the logs again, and now it's actually on port 16,650 instead of 3,000. So I take it it's going to work now. There we go, deployed. The moral of the story is Heroku is very picky about the port environment variable. It really wants to assign its own port, and it will not tolerate you just deploying to port 3,000. That's because you're on a shared computer with a lot of other people, so the other ports might be in use by other apps. And this environment variable, which is case sensitive, was at first lowercase port, but it really has to be uppercase port for Heroku to um, send the proper environment variable. But anyway, now our application is deployed. And um, that's basically, in a nutshell, how you can deploy to Heroku. The other method that you can use is to hook it into a Git repository on GitHub, 
and that's pretty easy to figure out. Um, this is honestly the harder way to do it through the command line. So pat yourself on the back if you understood all this, and have fun deploying to Heroku.